thank you to Mythic Legion's Tactics War of the Aetherblade for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to support the Kickstarter campaign today. Mythic Legion's Tactics War of the Aetherblade brings the popular fantasy toy line onto the screen for the very first time in this action-packed turn-based strategy and tactics game. This high fantasy adventure comes to life as players can choose different factions, customize their characters, and build campaigns with this innovative new title. Learn more about Mythic Legion's Tactics War of the Aetherblade by visiting the Kickstarter page, where you'll find in-progress gameplay footage and images, a full list of stretch goals, exclusive figure offers, and descriptions of the backer packages. Mythic Legion's Tactics War of the Aetherblade will be playable on PC, Android, and iOS platforms at launch. Join the Kickstarter to get the video game and an exclusive set of beautifully sculpted, highly collectible action figures. Thanks again to Mythic Legion's Tactics War of the Aetherblade for sponsoring this video. Dan Larson here at the photo booth with a small assortment of stuff that uh, was sent in to us here by uh, Diamond Select. Uh, we've got uh, on the left, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow. I think this is the deluxe edition. There's usually like two editions of these. There's like the sort of uh, direct sale version that goes to your comic shops uh, or is like a direct sale. Uh, and then there's the like, you know, Walgreens exclusive version that would be like, instead of it being Jack uh, and he's got a sword hand there and he's also got some diorama pieces, it would just be Jack with a sword hand. Uh, they're usually, uh, yeah, smaller box. Uh, in the middle, we've got Loki, uh, which is, uh, what are we calling these? Um, do we have names on these? Uh, well, I don't remember which version of this is. It's an alternate universe, I'm assuming, version of Loki. And then, of course, you have Kid Loki. Or at least uh, alternate uh, story takes on the two characters. Uh, we don't traditionally see him in that uh, jacket and the, and the tiny horns, the little horn headdress. Uh, and then on the right here, we have The Crow from uh, 1994's movie, The Crow with Brandon Lee. Uh, this is... Uh, Deluxe action figure box set, one of 5,000. Oh boy, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open that one now. Oh, look at this, it's, uh, it says, I did not realize this was a thing on, uh, on the box here. It says this is a previews exclusive, San Diego uh, 2021 limited to 5,000. Huh, that's pretty cool. I don't think any of these others are like exclusives or anything. Diamond Select. Nope, that looks like it's just the main regular version of that. And I know I've seen these uh, out on the shelves, uh, or at least I've seen people posting them uh, online. Uh, my ability to distinguish between what I've seen in person and what, on, what, uh, what I've seen online is, uh, it's been blurry uh, the last uh, year and a half. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open these up. We'll take a look at them here. Uh, thanks to Diamond Select for sending this stuff in for us to take a look at. I don't know if I can open that crow one. Uh, here we've got, you know, actually I'm acting like I'm gonna open this, like I didn't already cut this open last night and take a look at it. I have the uh, figure arts version of Jack Sparrow. Got a little backer here with uh, some maps, a little star charts there. It's kind of water, but also at the same time, it's kind of like the night sky. Uh, and then on the inside here, tilt you down here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, on the inside here, we've got the figure. We've got an alternate hand that has uh, a sword already in it. And I don't believe, I, I couldn't get this sword to come out of his hand. So I think that's molded together all as one piece. Uh, and then in here, you have some diorama pieces. And I hate to say it, but this is actually what I'm most excited about <laughs> with this. Uh, that's one thing that, uh, you know, especially uh, over the years has really separated Diamond Select uh, stuff from the rest of, you know, mainstream uh, action figures and whatever is, how does this go together? This collapse, what do we got here? Um, is, uh, is, is this a whole thing? Oh no, okay, so this probably goes here. This probably goes here like this. Mm, how does this go? This. All right, now I gotta see if there's like instructions or anything. Uh, what's usually set Diamond Select apart from other uh, action figure brands is the inclusion of uh, diorama pieces and stuff like this. But I don't see how this attaches. Oh, does this go? Oh, okay, so this goes here, that goes there, this goes here. Like that, and then this would attach here. Does this come up? Ah, there we go. This goes here. Bam. 
This goes here. Bam. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now you're talking. Ah, oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> like that a lot. That could be that could be the uh, the uh, railing on the Black Pearl. That could be some other ship. This could be a balcony at like the X Mansion. Uh, whatever. It's a it's a versatile piece of uh, diorama gear, which is awesome. Dig it. For Jack here, we've got. Uh, Pretty good looking figure. Uh, that face is pretty sharp. Um, I do appreciate that uh, so much detail went into this. Um, I mean, he's got pretty much everything you could ask for there in terms of the sculpt and a lot of really nice paint finishes. Um, some of the detail on that sculpt does get lost in what feels like, what looks like a uh, pretty heavy paint application. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a really nice figure and uh, you've got all the articulation really that you could want here as far as, I mean, it's, you know, pretty standard for diamond select. You've got like a torso bend and, you know, the hair is limited by the uh, sculpt of the hair, which happens with a lot of action figures. The, his, his sheath here is, uh, I'm not really sure what you would call this, his uh, bandolier. Um, you're not going to be putting the sword in here. I got to see if this handle come off. It's got to, like, it feels like it might just, like you could, it's pop it like it's just painted like it's stuck by paint but I don't think that's it I think it's actually sculpted in there so you're not really gonna be it'll fit <laughs> but it's weird if you can't get that hand off I'm sure if you really want to get that hand off you can uh, but uh, he's got these expressive hands on here and that's really nice and the face looks pretty good um, it's actually pretty I'm not sure how close up I can get here but it's actually pretty detailed the the paint application on this is really really fantastic uh, you get all the little you know knots and bits and stuff in his hair and the braids and whatever you got some detail on the buckles there looking good i mean fingernails his rings are all painted all that stuff uh so you know if if uh if you have the if you have the figure arts fine if you don't this one's uh, definitely more in, a, in the uh, budget price range and i don't mean that to say like budget in a bad way i just mean it's more affordable and if you want a Jack Skellington figure, Jack Skellington. <laughs> if you want a Jack Sparrow figure, uh, Jack Skellington actually you can get through Diamond Select as well. But uh, if you want a Jack Sparrow figure, uh, this is actually a really nice one. Seven inch scale. This hand swaps out to put his sword in. That's a little weird because you got it. Seems like it's got to get sort of in between the cuff, the V cuff on his sleeve there. Um, but. Uh, yeah, got display options there. He'll look great standing on the uh, diorama piece here. It also comes with a stand. I, I really don't like using stands. Here's the thing. I do like using stands if it's just going to be a long-term thing, you know, standing on my shelf, like, that I don't want to incidentally fall over, you know, sometime in the middle of the night uh, or because somebody bumped a shelf or something. Um, when it comes to posing, you know, uh, here in the photo booth, I hate using stands, uh, even if they're, like, flight stands and stuff. I try to do everything I can to not have a stand in the picture. I mean, sometimes you just have to, but uh, I like that it comes with a stand for long-term uh, displayability there. Uh, let's take a look at the, the two Lokis. I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say that this uh, kid Loki was uh, is out because of the Loki. I mean, this whole set is out because of the Loki series, obviously. Uh, my only disappointing thing about this... I'll grab my clippers. The only disappointing thing about this is that it doesn't come with uh, alligator Loki. That would have been fun. Oh no, where are my clippers? All right, well, I guess... Oh, here they are. Hang on. Hang on, I thought I was prepared. Alligator Loki really would have made this uh, this pack sing. So we got to stand there. I'm assuming that's for Kid Loki because adult Loki here has uh, what looks like, you know, standard articulation again. But uh, Kid Loki looks like he's just a solid piece of plastic. Cut this from behind maybe. There we go. All right, so yeah, Kid Loki. Yeah, his head doesn't even turn. So he's basically just a sort of uh, solid accessory for the adult Loki figure. Looks good. Looks really, really good. Um, 
worry about stuff like that. Sometimes, uh, you know, those figures have a tendency to get a little warped, not necessarily from Diamond Slag, just uh, in general. Uh, if, uh, and if they get warped at all, they kind of become useless. Get these alternate arms out of here. I don't know. It's been a while since I read comics regularly, so I don't know what stories specifically these are from. There, and I don't know why uh, this figure would come with uh, ripped and not ripped sleeves. I'm sure it plays into the story somewhere. Uh, so we got a nice uh, scepter here, staff with uh, a magical orb in the middle, two weapons, a little dagger, and a really, really nice sword that uh, will complement. Uh, you can pull this out of, uh, out of your Marvel Select figures here and uh, use it with all kinds of different action figures, as we'll look with your Mythic Legions, with your Masters of the Universe. Just a good all-purpose sword right there. Uh, give it to the Black Knight. And Loki here. I, I like the diamond uh, articulation system here. I know a lot of people don't like these hips. Uh, I don't have a problem with, with them at all. Um, my go-to MCU Spider-Man is the diamond select version from, uh, it was probably the version from, probably from the first uh, Far From Home, or uh, Homecoming, excuse me. Um, and, uh, and I dig it. I just think uh, in terms of surface texture and sculpt, uh, it came with a diorama piece, <laughs> and uh, you know, and for the price, it was a really, really great deal. Uh, Daredevil too, the Netflix Daredevil. Um, that uh, their Netflix Daredevil is my go-to Netflix Daredevil. I think it looks great. Uh, is is the best hip system? I don't know. I don't care. Uh, did he steal Aquaman's shirt? Oh no, Aquaman's shirt would be orange. What am I talking about? But uh, nice looking Loki figure. Um, oh, this dagger should fit right in his sheath here. Scabbard. There we go. Nice. I don't think he has anything for the sword. Uh, let's see if we can pop these arms. Ooh, shiny gold on the inside. And it, it's not a matter of taking the cloak off here uh, because it still has, uh, you know, we don't have like bare arms or anything. So which way do these go? Does it matter? Let's throw this on here. Hopefully they were sculpted somewhat reversibly. All right, that pops out. Snap it back on at the forearm. All right. So yeah, you've got display options there. It's very, uh, it's very Trent Reznor. Looking good. Yeah, so you got uh, tattered arms or regular arms. Uh, like I said, I'm sure there's uh, a purpose for that in the comics, if uh, if you've been keeping up, which I have not. Um, give me this scepter here. Nope. Got to bend it at the elbow instead of pushing on the forearm. There we go. Looking good. And oh, see, I thought the stand was going to be for that figure. Probably work over here too. Good, good. All right. Oh boy. Now this. Uh, yeah. Let's let's open it. What am I talking about here? Of course, I'm going to open it. Let's open the crow. The last crow figure I actually uh, owned or purchased rather would have been the McFarlane. I think McFarlane. Yeah, the McFarlane Crow. I think I have owned the... Geez, I don't know if it was NECA. I think it was NECA. Uh, but definitely the McFarlane Crow from back in the day. Uh, oh man, this packaging is so nice. But I gotta get this figure out. Start clipping. This should get it. Cut that one. Cut that one. 
I'm trying to do this in a way that I can actually <laughs> preserve the box because the presentation is really nice on this. There we go. Uh, so while I don't usually keep packaging and boxes and that kind of stuff, I wouldn't mind being able to put this back in here as a cool display piece. There we go. I'm going to leave the, the actual crow in there for now. Oof. He's, uh, I understand the packaging reasons for uh, strapping his wrists down, but that, uh, <laughs> that looks painful. It looks like he's uh, in a tight spot. Nice chair. This chair would go well with that balcony. Cut that. Cut that. Get his little booster seat out of here. So yeah, really nice chair here. A crow emblem on the back. Looking good. Little disappointed he doesn't come with a guitar. I think the regular version comes with a guitar. Probably a jacket too, maybe. But uh, yeah, that's a real nice looking figure. That's a figure I really, really would have liked to have back in uh, 1994 when the crow was uh, the biggest thing on earth and the absolute biggest, best comic book movie uh, at the time. Just a just a real promise of, you know, like oh here's a here's a movie that is you know, doing justice, quote unquote, to the subject matter. And uh, if nothing else, just making for a very thrilling, exciting uh, movie that captured the sort of spirit of uh, what I wanted to see in a movie about that character at the time. Uh, not to mention the, the uh, soundtrack, which uh, I still have uh, playing in my regular playlist <laughs> pretty often. Uh, but you couldn't go, you couldn't go anywhere in 1994, 1995 without seeing Crow stuff all over the place. Uh, especially in the dorms I was living in, but uh, really nice figure. Um, this uh, this presentation is incredible. Uh, I don't know enough about what uh, is in the regular packaging for this that uh, didn't make it into this set and what this set. I'm guessing the chair is exclusive to this set and then this cardboard backing and the window box diorama here. Um, also don't know if that crow has like a peg or anything. Yeah, it looks like there's a peg right in its butt that would probably fit on the uh, mass release version that uh, doesn't seem to be included here on this version. But very cool stuff. Uh, three really, really nice figures. Four if you want to count Kid Loki. Glad to, glad to take a look at those. Uh, really excited to be able to use that uh, Jack Sparrow diorama in, uh, in pictures going forward. So thank you very much to uh, Diamond for sending those pieces over, for sending us this assortment, this sampler of action figures. Uh, thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Head over to Regular Toy Galaxy and subscribe there if you're already not, or if you're not already. Uh, if you haven't heard, we started streaming on Twitch. Find us at twitch.tv slash toygalaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Thanks for watching. Later.